Hey everybody, it's Dave here. In one of my previous videos, you used EV and G as the underlay for my NSXT environment, and I had a couple questions around how I configured EV and G itself, but also the virtual switches on my ESXi host. So in today's video, I hope to provide a little bit of insight on that, and hopefully you find the video helpful. As you can see here, I have my ESXi host, and it contains some virtual machines. Um, it has seven virtual switches configured, uh, which we'll talk about here shortly, but it also has EV and G configured. In today's video, I won't be going over the configuration of the spine leaf topology. I did that in my previous video. So if you're interested in that, links are in the description below. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on these clouds and how they relate to these P nets on the left hand side. In today's demo, we're going to be building out cloud one and cloud six. Now these clouds, they're associated with these peanuts. See, I have them highlighted, these numbers highlighted in orange. So cloud one is gonna be associated with peanut one and cloud six is gonna be associated with peanut six. And these peanuts are then bridged to the interfaces that we create and attach to the EVNG virtual machine. So in this case, peanut one is bridged to ETH one and peanut six is bridged to ETH six. Uh, this is important because if we want leaf two and leaf one to communicate with our edge nodes, so edge node four and edge node two, we want to make sure that we plug these interfaces in the corresponding port groups. So as you can see here, I have seven virtual switches and each of these virtual switches have a single port group associated with them. And we'll take trunk two that you see here. This is a port group. And you can see I named cloud one trunk two as well, just so I, I can visually see that have that mapping in my head saying, hey, cloud one is going to be associated with this port group here. And the same thing with trunk zero one. It's associated with this trunk zero one port group. Um, when we're attaching those network adapters, we want to make sure we put them in the corresponding port group. So in this case, pnet one, which is eth one is going to be in trunk two. As you can see here, we have EVNG right here. Same thing with uh, pnet six, which is E6. And you can see that virtual machine is right here, which is EVNG itself. Now these other virtual machines that you see, since we want to peer with our NSXT edge nodes, those edge nodes are also have network adapters that are associated with this port group. So they can directly communicate with each other. Now all the virtual switches have promiscuous mode enabled. They're trunking all VLANs. And out of all the virtual switches you see here, there's only one virtual switch that has a physical adapter associated with it. And it's this EV and G external. And it has a VMNIC seven adapter, which connects to my 10 gigabit switch in the physical world. So this is what allows EV and G to get out to the internet. So with that, let's jump back over into the demo environment. We have virtual switch one through seven. These virtual switches are what we're using in today's demo. If we expand virtual switch one, we have our out of band management network. And again, it has promiscuous mode enabled. This is set to accept. It also has jumbo frames enabled. All the virtual switches that I'm gonna to discuss today, they have jumbo frames enabled, they have promiscuous mode enabled, and they're trunking all VLANs right here. The virtual machines associated with the out of band is my domain controller, which provides DHCP to those cumulus switches. And then I have my management VM, which is where I run those Ansible scripts from. And then I have EVNG itself associated with this. Switch two is the ESXi management network. And again, trunking all VLANs. And I have my ESXi01 associated with it, as well as EVNG. Virtual switch three and four. These are my trunk ports to the um, edge nodes. And as you can see, we look at the virtual machines. We have edge node two and edge node four. Trunk two, we have edge node two and edge node four as well as well as the EVNG. Virtual switch five is the only one that has a physical adapter that I mentioned earlier that goes to my uh, my physical switch. And it's on VLAN 301. And this is what allows traffic to communicate out to the internet. And then lastly, these two uh, virtual switch six and virtual switch seven have a couple port groups, uh, one called uplink one and uplink two. And again, this contains that, ES that nested ESXi01 and EVNG itself. So if we look at EVNG, we can confirm that they're associated with all these port groups. 
by looking at the network adapters on the virtual machine itself. So if we right click EVNG and click edit settings, we can see all the adapters that we have here. And again, they're associated with the out of band management, external, trunk, trunk, um, management, uplink one and uplink two. Now let's look at EVNG. So this is the configuration that you saw in the previous video. Uh, the only addition that I added here was the ESXi host itself. As you can see here, I'm running ESXi 7.0.1 and I have it configured to uh, plug directly into my Leaf 2 switch. And I'm trunking the appropriate VLANs, VLAN 87 for management and VLAN 88 for my overlay. And if we right click on one of these external clouds, just to drive that point home around the clouds. So if we click edit here and we look at the type, so this is cloud four. So if we go back to our diagram, um, that's gonna be PNET four, right? And PNET four is associated with this external port group, which allows me to get out to the internet. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create cloud one and cloud six. So I'm gonna right click in the empty area and click network. We're gonna call this EVNG trunk two. Uh, we'll select the cloud from the picture, but you can select anything you want. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna stick with the cloud. Cloud, and then we're gonna select, I think it was cloud one. Let me make sure here. So yes, cloud one and click save. So this just, it puts a cloud here. I don't have connectivity yet. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Let's create cloud six. So we could call this one EVNG trunk one. Oops. Trunk one. Select the cloud. And we're going to select cloud number six, which is PNET six. And click save. So right now I don't have communication and I can confirm this. If we double click on these Leaf switches here, we can get into the console. We're gonna run some ping tests right now. So Leaf 2 is gonna ping the Edge Note 4 interface, which is 172.18.0.33. And then Leaf 1 is gonna ping Edge Note 02 interface, which is 172.18.0.29. As you can see, I'm getting unreachable. I'm not having any communication. We haven't connected this cloud to the switch port yet. But before we do that, I do want to show you that association from a from a bridging perspective. Remember I, I mentioned PNETs are associated with the Ethernet adapters for that virtual machine. So if we SSH into EVNG virtual machine and run this bridge command, it'll show us the, the bridge name. So in this case, PNET0. And it'll show us that it's associated with interface ETH0. So this is that mapping I was describing earlier when we were talking about the architecture. PNET1 is associated with ETH1, ETH2 is associated with PNET2, so on and so forth, down the, down the list here. So let's switch back over. You can see that we're not able to ping, and let's go ahead and start connecting the cloud up to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little icon here and just drag it to Leaf2, and I'm gonna plug it into switch port three. And then once I click save, it's gonna take a couple of seconds, but we should start seeing some pings on Leaf2 go through successfully. And there you go. You see, we're able to now successfully ping the interface of our NSXT environment. So this dot 33 interface. And if we go ahead and plug this into switch port three on leaf one, you can see leaf one should start also communicating with the NSXT environment. And there you have it. So we're able to communicate with, um, with those interfaces. So we should be able to start seeing our BGP sessions come up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. Let me close it, reopen it, cancel this and cancel this. And if we log into our NSX environment and we click on networking and we go to tier zero gateways, here's the EVNG gateway. And this has a couple of interfaces in, in it. So we were pinging the dot 29 and dot 33 interfaces. So that's, that's the communication we were confirming. So we were able to ping the interfaces associated with this tier zero logical router. 
I also created some loopback addresses. Um, this is more so just to confirm BGP is actually redistributing this route into my EVNG environment, which I'll show you here in a second. But we can confirm if uh, BGP is up by expanding BGP, uh, go to our BGP neighbors. And right now you can see it's down, but if I click refresher, um, we should start seeing it come up here. There it goes. Success and success. So we actually should be exchanging routes now. So if I close this and we head back over to EVNG and I do on leaf two, if I do net show route BGP, we should start seeing those routes being learned from our NSXT environment. And there you go. You can see 7.7.7 .7 is being learned as well as 8.8.8. .8. And if we do the same thing over here, net show route BGP. Again, we're learning 7.7.7 .7 .7 .7 .7 .7 from our NSXT environment. Uh, we're also learning this 172.22.0.0 slash 24 network. This is a net overlay network that I created to test communication between a virtual machine sitting on this ESXi host and the other virtual machine sitting on ESXi 01. And if we log into those ESXi hosts themselves, you can see I have one virtual machine. Um, it's sitting on a logical segment. So if we egg uh, right click this and edit settings. It's sitting on an NSXT segment called seg eve. And if I do the same thing for ESXi02, this is sitting inside the EVNG environment. If I go to virtual machines, right click, edit settings, you can see it's sitting on that same segment. And if we go over into the NSXT and we click on segments, we can see that segment right here. And it's associated with a tier one router called T1 Eve. And in order for the communication of those two virtual machines to be able to communicate with each other, they have to use the NSXT overlay. And to do that, we can confirm that the ESXi hosts have been prepped and are, are working with e, um, NSXT, as you can see here, they have been prepped. Um, configuration is a success, but also our tunnels are up. So they're able to communicate with themselves, but they're also able to communicate with those edge nodes that I described earlier in the diagram, edge nodes four and edge nodes uh, two, so two and four. But they have tunnels up between themselves, but also the um, ES6i uh, virtual machines. So if we go ahead and switch over to the command prompt, Go ahead and clear this side. We don't need this anymore. But if we SSH into the VM, so SSH into VM1, give it a name. So that's VM1 and SSH into VM2. There's VM2. And let's go ahead and do an if command so we can see that IP addresses of each other. And let's go ahead and then perform a ping. Now remember, VM1 is sitting on our ESXi01, which is living natively in the my ESXi server. And VM2 is sitting on the nested ESXi02 VM that is hosted in the EVNG environment. And the way they're able to communicate with each other is by using the NSXT overlay. So if we try to ping each other, so ping 172.22.0.42. Oops, help if I spelled it right. There you go. You can see that we're able to ping that workload. I'll go ahead and cancel that one and we'll do the same thing over here. Uh, ping 172.22.0.41. And I'm able to ping. And remember I told you that our leaf three is responsible for getting us out to the physical side of being able to communicate with the internet. So let's go ahead and see if we can, these VMs can ping the internet as well. So if I go ping 1.1.1.1, you can see that I am able to ping the internet. Uh, ping 1.1.1. So that's it. That's gonna wrap this video. Hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video.